In the beginning of 2025, LEGO released over 100 sets, but there was one in particular that stood out for me, and it was the Scrapyard. I was so excited for the release of this and couldn't wait to get my hands on it. Recently, I've really been trying to test my creative abilities, both through building and starting to learn code. I've been learning to code with the Arduino Uno, and in this video, we're going to put that to the test. Before I get into that, I need to build this set first, so let's get into it. So with that out of the way, let's take a quick look at this set. You get four minifigures, which is pretty cool, but let's take a look at some of the functions and what else you get included. It comes with two nice cars, soon to be crushed though. What a shame. My favorite's the black one. The white one's pretty cool though. They was really nice and fun and simple to build. Now we're getting to the good stuff. It comes with the crane, although it's not the best. I found it really difficult to actually maneuver and that's something we're definitely going to be improving in this video. And last but by no means least, it comes with the crusher, the compactor, the smisher. Yeah, this bit is by far my favorite part. It is really, really cool. Drop the car in, shut the lid, push the little lever at the back and out pops a squashed car. So the standard functions are pretty cool and it has good playability, but I wanted to take this to the next level like I said in the beginning of the video. I'm going to start with getting rid of this clunky crane. I built a brand new crane arm from scratch and it has four continuous rotation servo motors in it. It has one for the claw, one to extend the claw sort of out and in, one to lift it up and down and one to rotate it through around 180 degrees. It can go further but the wires will tangle. To control this I built a custom controller, built all that Lego apart from the two joystick modules and it has a nice long umbilical cord that runs all the cables to the Arduino Uno board. In order for this to fully work, we needed to do some simple code, which I'll display on screen now for anybody who wants to copy it. So let's take a quick look at the claw code. And basically it's quite simple. We're just including the servo.h library up at the top. And then we've uh, named the four servos, servo one, two, three, and four, just for ease. We've attached them to pins nine, 10, 11, and 12 on the digital pins of the Arduino Uno. And then we've got the four joystick inputs. We've got X, Y, and then I've done C and L for claw and for the length, which extends it um, in and out. And that's just analog reading pins, A0, A1, A2, and A3. From there, we have to map the position and we do that by reading the joystick value, which is set in zero to 1023, 512 being roughly in the middle. Um, and then if you go to more to zero, it'll go more to the left and, and higher to 1023, it'll go to the right. And then zero to 180, 90 being in the middle, again, at a fixed position, not moving. And then zero moving to the left and then 180 moving to the right, um, I believe. Anyway, and then we write the servos to the servo position. So that's literally all there is to it. So this code is relatively simple. Still took me a little bit to figure out. I've been doing a lot of courses trying to get my head around this. The um, You will have seen the claw machine that I've um, done in the beginning of the video. Uh, the reason that's not had a video put out yet is because I'm struggling a lot with the code for that. It's a lot more complex than this and there's quite a few issues. I originally coded that on the micro bit, but um, I've hit some limitations and it's not quite doing what I want it to do. So I'm moving that over to Arduino, but I've had to write a new program for that. So once I get that right, hopefully we'll do a full video on the claw machine. I think that's going to be a really good one. But anyway, let's get back to this video. So the next stage was to try and automate the crusher. I added in these two Technic pins with the axle um, ports on the inside of them so that I could add on a separate module. But before I did that, I added in this bottom section which contains a linear actuator and a micro motor. It just clips together and this enables the bottom slider to push in and out, controlled using a power functions battery pack and the little sort of two-way switch. Now we can take a look at the full back assembly which has the gear reduction in it for the um, top opening flaps and also the battery pack. I'll be the first to admit that aesthetically this doesn't look too great. My focus was not really on sort of making it look great. I went with red to keep in with the colour scheme but my main goal was to get everything powered up and working and that I believe was a success. Spending a bit more time on this I could make it look a lot better but I just didn't have the time for this video. 
So that brings us to the end of powering up all the functions that I actually wanted to do. Let me know in the comments if you think that I made an improvement or if you think that I've destroyed the set by making it look a little bit too big and clunky, but I personally think it's great and it's really added to the playability. Let's take a look at it in action and if you enjoyed this video please consider liking and subscribing to get notifications to see more videos just like this. But thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.